Hey viewers, this is Fernando from SkyFi Audio uh, coming at you from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Uh, first of all, my apologies to our audiophile viewers who are expecting to see yet another great audio video. Um, a lot of you know that we're also into cars and watches, and what we call the trifacto. So uh, this particular video is about troubleshooting uh, a new E30 M3 that we just received at the shop, which is having some issues with the tachometer um, as you can see, I've got um, an E30 M3 uh, cluster gauge here, um, the 160 mile an hour speedometer and the 8,000 RPM attack will give you an indication that it is in fact uh, an M3. And also in the back here, a good friend of mine, um, Nikki Donkey, lent me this um, E30 gauge cluster from about 320E, uh, which is a 1988 BMW. Having two clusters is, is extremely helpful in sort of doing part substitution, getting a reference point, and uh, helping troubleshoot and finding the, the ultimate problem. So the symptom is simple. Um, the M3 came in, and the first thing I noticed is that at idle, which is tends to be somewhere between 500 and 1,000 RPM, the tachometer was registering zero RPM, which is obviously a symptom of, of something amiss. And then I did notice that as I rep through the gears that it wasn't registering high enough. I'm pretty sure I was near red line and the tack was only showing five or 6,000 RPM. So ultimately what I should have done is, is referenced it against a known entity. I should have gotten some sort of OBD computer and wired it so that I could see in the cockpit what uh, the reference RPMs were compared against the gauge cluster. But I got a feeling there's something wrong with this particular indicator, especially since the shop that sold me the car had it sent out to video a couple times to try to solve the issue. And I, I suspect that they just weren't successful at fixing it. So I thought today would be a good idea to, although I don't have the ultimate solution, it'd be a good idea to make a video on how these clusters work in case there's someone out there also looking to troubleshoot particularly the RPM indicator on an E30, whether it's an M3 or a 318 or 320 or 25. So I'm gonna dive in, tell you how I connected um, the test equipment, what I'm using, and where I got all the information from. So first of all, let's focus in on the schematic from, uh, this is from an E30 uh, M3 1988, and uh, they tend to be pretty similar. So the pinouts are almost the same across all E30. Um, models. Um, the main difference being that the M3 has a oil temperature indicator in the tack wheel while the other ones tend to have a mile per gallon indicator in the same tachometer. And the obvious that it only reads to 5,000 RPM while the M3 which is a high rep S14 engine reads to 8,000 RPM. So the cluster is removed uh, from the housing so we can get to all the connectors and rather than tying connectors to the back of the housing which is what most people do i've soldered uh, some test points along the way on these connectors and i'll go through it one by one to tell you how i got this to light up now i did not light up all the functions within the gauge cluster i focused mostly on the rpm indicator because that's what i'm troubleshooting the pin pinouts will be slightly different if you're troubleshooting the speedometer, which is also a very common fault. So let's look at the schematic. This one came from uh, shark.armchair.mb.ca. If you just Google E30 M3 schematics, uh, this will come up and deep into the document, you'll find uh, instrument cluster 6210-3, which is the tachometer and the fuel economy gauge. Um, and right off the bat, you know, this is something's amiss, right? Because the M3 does not have a a fuel economy gauge, but it must be the same document as an E30, uh, 320E. So in order to light up the cluster, um, we need to give it power. And that comes from here, in this particular place, from a Lambda regulated power supply where I'm able to dial in both the voltage and the current. Um, I set it to 12 volts, it could be a little higher. And I'm currently limited to about 0.2 amps, just in case something goes wrong. I know that this gauge is not gonna take more than about a quarter of an amp, so I've, uh, I put a little safety in there for us. Uh, Pinout wise, um, I, I traced here that, oh, there are in fact two connectors on the 
this gauge cluster. There are three. There's a blue one, a gray one, and some other one. Let me see, what, flip this over if I can show you. So C1 is this connector here, uh, which is on the same side, side as the a temperature gauge on the front. C2 is this white one and C3 is this yellow one. So we're gonna be concentrating on C1 and C2 mostly. Let me go over that. So um, in order to get power to the cluster, I have connected um, pin two in C1 to positive 12 volts. I've also connected pin one. Uh, that's here, C1 pin one which seems to be coming from the ignition switch. Um, so you'll see there's a, this is the front of C1 connector. I've got two pins shorted together right here, going through this white wire to the positive of the power supply. And then on the negative side, it was simple. I just grabbed uh, pin 20 on connector C1, which is, um, let's see. If you look at this connector carefully, it starts at one at the bottom, goes up to 13, and then it picks up again 14, and then goes up to 21. So this yellow clip here is on the uh, pin 20 of C1, and that goes to ground of the power supply. I did remove the um, both the fuel indicator and the temperature indicator from the cluster to make it easier to get to. It's pretty simple to do. You just remove this nut in the back and uh, little sub dial just pops right out so um, again here's our ground connection going to pin 20 of c1 and then on c2 i connected a positive going over to pin one two three four five pin six uh, i could not get this to light up unless i did that so here's connector c2 uh, going to pin six, and that should get a constant 12 volts, which is hot in run or start mode. So that immediately lit up this bulb here, giving us a sense of real power, and the gauges moved just slightly. Now, in order to get this to activate, um, you have to feed it a square wave signal from a frequency generator. I've got one here from Tektronix. Uh, it's a very old school manual frequency generator. Um, I've selected the square wave. I selected... Um, a range of 100 hertz and I will use this wheel to dial in how much frequency I want and then for amplitude um, I read online that you need at least 8 volts in order to drive this meter so I dialed it to about 10 volts um, and just generated the square wave and as you can see over here I got an oscilloscope showing a somewhat sloppy but um, good enough square wave to drive the meter so the result from all this after powering off the power supply is that as I change the frequency, which is this dial here reflected up there in Hertz, that's about 32 Hertz right now. If I increase the frequency, you'll see it climb to about 126. Going back to zero Hertz, the result of this is that I can go from zero uh, this particular range maxes out at six uh, 229 hertz, which corresponds to about 6,000 RPM. If I change the range on this particular device, I go to 1K, I can now blow past 6 well into the red line. So a couple other things to note on the E30 cluster is that there is these uh, little module that sits in the front of the cluster that identifies the type of car that you have. Um, this one here, part number 1381699, is from an M3, an S14 engine, so it's a four-cylinder S14. If you reference that part number, it comes back as such. And then the other one I've got from the other cluster, part number 1377368, uh, references a 320E, which is from that cluster over there. So in order to troubleshoot and figure out where the problem lies, uh, I did a series of tests. I, I went through a bunch of frequencies, I made a chart, and I referenced, um, I was able to interchange both the 5,000 RPM uh, speedometer and the 8,000 RPM and speedometer. So the first thing I did was I moved them between the two units uh, to make sure that I got the same results on both clusters. Um, and I did in fact uh, get the same results. As I went through all the frequencies, they measured almost exactly the same. So 